Okay, perfect. So I hope that doesn't count towards my time. Uh, <laughs> so um, this talk is a little bit more advanced. So um, uh, people here who know um, uh, Kotlin and Rx and coroutines a little bit, they get more out of this. It's basically try to decide which one we want to use for asynchronous programming. Um, what is the problem we have actually tried to solve here? We try to make beautiful, smooth UIs, and, but just drawing lines and pictures is not enough. You want to show something, some data that you need to get from the internet or for some st from some storage. That might be a little slow, so you don't want to just get it on the main UI thread. But what happens is that your application starts hanging, it might, it, it might crash, and other things might happen. We have solutions for that to put it on a background thread. So UI keeps doing what it does, it issues the request, and some results come back. This is actually pretty tricky. But if you manage that, then you're kind of set. Your UI will be buttery smooth. Also, what we need to take into account is that we want to cancel out. So what happens there is the user loads the screen, the request takes a little long, you back out, you don't want your app to crash, and finally the UI is updated, but the UI is no longer there. You get all kinds of stuff. Rx and coroutine solve that problem, so that's not what it's about, but which one should we use if we have the choice between the two? So I have a quick intro in Rx. So Rx is basically an asynchronous programming way of um, observable streams. So there are observers that look at observables and they have values that they get notified of. That's basically what they do. How does it look like in code a little bit? This is kind of the standard way you look at it. So here I get something from the server, from the name. I get a name from some remote thing and I want to put it in a text view at some point. So I subscribe this observer to this observable. This runs on an I.O. thread and this thing runs on the main UI thread. That's basically kind of how it looks like for single results. For streams, it's more like this. You have a flowable or an observable, and not one value, one result comes out, but a whole bunch of them. And you maybe data that comes from a web socket or from a Bluetooth device, something like that. You see hot or cold, what the issue here is that for hot observables, they start emitting immediately as soon as they get created. Cold only does stuff when somebody is listening. In Rx, you don't have that distinction. You kind of have to guess what you have in your hand. Coroutine solve the same issues, slightly different. Coroutine is an execution that allows to be suspended. So your code looks very imperative, sequential. Instead of waiting for the result to get called back, you just call the function that returns a value, and then you continue with that value that is being returned with your regular program. Um, that makes a very easy way of making loops, making if statements and breaking out and having easy flow control. So how does the previous example look like? in coroutines. Well, just a get name, suspend fun, that is like the keyword you need to use. So this thing is executed on the back, on the background thread, but I just call it, I don't have a callback. So what happens here, my main thread stops here, calls this thing, and when this thing returns a, a value, my main thread just continues here and assigns it to the text, and then it's shown in the, in the text view. Totally different way of getting about it. Coroutines do have the difference between cold and hot streams. So if you have a channel in your hand, you know it's a hot stream. The thing starts producing immediately. So producer might be active. You've got to think about that because if you cancel, you want to cancel your producer that puts values in that stream. The flow is cold. So if your flow gets canceled, your producer that puts values in there also gets canceled. So given that, let's look at those few examples. And let's pick a winner if we can. Programming style, totally different between the two of them. Top coroutine, very imperative, very familiar, isn't it? This is not that hard, flat map map, but you know, you're getting there. So I think that's the winner. Yeah. Normally I do a Q&A with this, but we only have limited time. So you pick it, I pick it now. Dispatching between threads, we already saw a little bit of the example. So here, coroutine scope on the main. So this part here runs on the main, and this part here runs on the background thread. Here you use the subscribe one and the observe one for the same, the same effect. And these are not equal. This is not that, that much different. Flow control, here we get it. Here I have a piece of data I want to get like three times. If it succeeds, I want to get the value. But if it fails, I want to have three times. Simple, for loop, 
If I catch an error, delay a little bit, I'll try again. Trivial, 10 minutes it took me to write this. This took me four hours. It got into work, you know, and I know RX a little bit. It still took me a long time looking at marble diagrams. So, yeah. <laughs> Streams. So here I have an example of a stream. In this case, a cold stream. Why cold? Oh, stepping on something. The touch listener is always active. If you move your finger, if nobody's listening, it still goes about. And here I'm drawing something on the screen. And here I have it in RX. Yeah, I would actually put this RX a little bit. There's a little bit more verbose in, in, in Cody. Custom operators. Have you ever looked at the map of our uh, mapping function streams? You can map a uh, stream of one type to a map of another type. Here, if it's null, I don't map it. That's the example. In here, it's pretty trivial. If the result not is null, then put it, send it. If you ever looked at the RX map, there's a lot of lines. So if they have to write this from scratch, won't even fit on this page. It's going to be a couple hundred lines. So this is an absolute winner, I think. Yes. But you can use both. You don't have to choose, you know. So you can, if, if we are allowed to download these uh, slides, then you, you can just look at the links here and, and, and figure out how you can move between the two of them. So the conclusion is there's no real no real clear winner, but if your team is very, you know, familiar with imperative sequential programming and you have mostly reading from files and networks and databases and such like that, try to go with coroutines. If you have a very stream, an app that combines a lot of streams, is very reactive, choose Rx. Or maybe both if you want to. Um, so, Rxit, I think it's one foot out of the door, especially with the new flow uh, API that's coming out for coroutines. Thank you very much.